In this video, we're going to be talking about the calibration of a chemical injection pump. How do we set the flow rate? Right? We're going to talk first about how we read a graduated cylinder to make sure we understand the proper method for determining the flow going through the pump. And then we're also going to demonstrate uh, some devices here. We're going to demonstrate the correct method for calibration as well as the types of flow meters that you might use. So looking at our setup here, what we've got is we've got a graduated cylinder on the top that we're going to be putting our water and our fertilizer through. Uh, from the graduated cylinder, it flows through the hose into a chemical flow meter there. This particular unit is a PE202. And from that flow meter, we now flow up into a bobber style flow meter. This has a little float that will float up and down with the chemical flow. From there, it moves through a hose and into the inlet side of our injection pump. This particular injection pump is a positive displacement pump, and so it can be adjusted two ways using the stroke uh, length as well as the speed. So we've got this set to pump approximately five gallons per hour today. From there, we have the discharge line, and we just have it discharging into a jug so you can see how much flow is being pumped through. We also have the display unit for our chemigation flow meter. Right now it says 4.82. So we're close to the target there of 5.0 gallons per hour. So you'll notice here we have our graduated cylinder on the inlet of the pump. In other words, we're sucking out of this graduated cylinder. That's the best way to do it because you're always gonna have the same pressure basically on the, on the inlet side of the pump. On the discharge side of the pump, you may have more pressure uh, because the, you're injecting into an irrigation line and the system pressure in the, in the irrigation line may change. It may be higher one day and so you're not getting as much volume of chemical injected as you think you are. So we always want to set our calibration from the inlet side of the pump. So you don't want to calibrate it by using the discharge side. So using the pressurized side here and just putting it into a graduated cylinder and timing it. And the reason why is because this is just discharging to the atmosphere. If this was discharging into a pressurized system, it would have a, you know, it'd have more pressure on it, and so therefore it might not inject at the same rate. So you always want to make sure that when you calibrate the injection rate that you're doing it from the inlet side to the pump and not the discharge side. So here's the best way to read a graduated cylinder. The first thing that you want to do is you want to hold this thing at eye level. So you want to raise this up until it's exactly at your eye level here so you can see what it is you're looking at. So you have to make sure this is plumb. If I'm holding it crooked here, it's gonna give me a poor reading. So you wanna make sure that you have this plumb. So I like to hold it up at the top so it holds plumb. Then you wanna to read to the bottom of the meniscus. It's a little hard probably to see the meniscus on camera. You have a curve basically that on the top of the surface of the water and you wanna to read to the bottom of that curve. And so in this particular case, looking at this, it looks like we have 126 milliliters in this particular uh, graduated cylinder at this moment. So right now you can see how much water we have in the graduated cylinder. This is going to be our standard. As this uh, drops, we will know how much, in this case it's water, but we will know how much we're injecting into our system. So we're going to use this and then verify that the other two flow measurement devices are uh, giving us that same amount of water going through. So here we are, we're gonna time lapse this so you don't have to wait so long to see, but we're gonna start at 2,500 milliliters. We're gonna drop it down to 2,000 milliliters. So we'll have injected a total of 500 milliliters. Then we're gonna do the calculation to show you what the rate of injection was. So here's the math, and we determined that we were injecting at about 5.1 gallons per hour. So here's our funnel bobber flow meter. Uh, these things are kind of common whenever you're just getting wanting to know an idea of how much chemical is being injected. Uh, you can see because of the positive displacement pump that we have, it's kind of acting like a piston in a car where it fires and then doesn't and then fires and doesn't. And so what you see here is that it's, um, it's kind of pulsing the fertilizer through the line here. And so it's hard to get a reading here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just look at it and we're gonna to try to take a min reading, a max reading, and then we'll average those and see if it kind of comes out to be what we expect it to be. 
So every time this, this uh, positive displacement pump pushes fluid in, it rises, and every time it, it goes back to take another stroke, it drops. The way you're supposed to use this instrument is you have to read it at the largest diameter. So you can see it looks like maybe on the max side, it's a little over six, and on the men's side, it's maybe three. All right, so here's our Symmetrics flow meter display. Uh, this particular unit is taking the pulse count from the, uh, from the meter, and then it's converting it into gallons per hour for us. So all we have to do is simply read the display here, and you can see that we are pretty close to five gallons per hour. These particular units uh, don't have anything inside of them, any moving parts, and so you can put different fertilizers through them and it doesn't affect the performance of it. They're pretty common for fertigation injection. Our first test, we use water to do a calibration to see how accurate the flow meters are. If you were to use water to do the calibration, we wanna know, okay, now that we've switched to our fertilizer, does it make a difference? And that's what we're gonna test now. So we'll use the graduated cylinder here to determine what the injection rate is. We didn't change anything in terms of the setup. All we did was add fertilizer to the setup uh, and replace the water. So we'll time lapse this and we'll do a calculation to see how much is now being sucked in because of the different viscosity of this fluid compared to water. So just like before, we'll be injecting 500 milliliters and we'll do the math to determine what the flow rate is for the chemical injection. This time the chemical injection rate is 4.5 gallons per hour. All right, so now that we have our fertilizer, by the way, this is ammonium polyphosphate that we're injecting here. Uh, has a much higher viscosity than water and these bobbers here are calibrated for water. They're not calibrated for any other uh, chemical or fertilizer. So you can see now the reading that we're getting from this particular unit using this fertilizer is much higher than we really have. It looks like it's reading somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20, 18 to 20 there gallons per hour. And our target, remember, was only five. Notice that the bobber is not bouncing up and down nearly as much as it did with the water because the viscosity is a little bit heavier with this, it uh, doesn't tend to bounce as much. One of the things you gotta be careful of is if you get any air in your line, uh, the air will make that bobber jump way up and it looks like you have more flow than you actually do. So you wanna make sure that you have only fluid in this line whenever it's running. So here's the flow rate from our C-metrics meter now. You can see that we were shooting for five. Again, we didn't change anything and now it says we're putting in about 4.3. So with a positive displacement pump, the flow rate should be pretty close to the same. But the point here is, is that once you've calibrated with water, it only gets you close. And you need to then probably calibrate with the fertilizer you're injecting if you're shooting for a certain uh, flow rate into your irrigation system. So what you just saw is that the chemical, when we injected the chemical, it did come through at a slightly slower rate. That shouldn't happen with a positive displacement pump. So what that probably tells us is that our uh, check valves here. So there's a check valve on the inlet side and then there's a check valve on the outlet side. And one of those checks probably has a little bit of debris in it or something that's uh, restricting the higher viscosity uh, fertilizer compared to the water. So just want to show you, you know, the problem with some of these things is you can't, uh, you know, when you go to unthread it here, you know, you can't actually unthread it because it, it hits, right? And so in this case, we have to actually take this apart. So we've got this set up already to take apart quickly. So we'll just pull these out. On this particular unit here, um, once we get this disconnected from the, uh, from the base there, we can just swivel this thing out and then we'll be able to take it apart. So we'll just go ahead and do that real quickly. So now we can swivel this out and that will allow us to unthread these. I've already loosened these up just to save a little bit of time here. So this is the outlet side. So remember these are check valves in here because we want, don't want fluid going backwards through these whenever we, uh, you know, we're not injecting. So we'll take this one apart here. It's just a T. If you can see in here maybe, you can see a little spring. 
the little uh, ball inside of there and uh, that is our our check okay the other side is just the back side of the ball there all right so that's the outlet side here and we want to make sure that you have these threaded in back the proper way <laughs> otherwise uh, it won't pump right and so we got to keep the orientation correct might want to even put an arrow on it or something so you don't forget so here's the other one here and uh, if you look inside of there what you can maybe see it looks like I got a little piece of rubber in there I'm not sure if you can see that all right so I just used a little bit of a screwdriver there and I was able to move that debris around these things should be checked probably at least once a year to verify that you know you don't have any chemical that got you know if it sits there for too long might plug it up or something so uh, do yourself a favor if you're noticing you're having any issues go ahead and take apart these checks and verify that they're clean and working properly so luckily with this particular pump here we have a variable frequency drive that would allow us to speed up the flow uh, to get back to our target there of 5.0 gallons per hour so the conclusion here is, is that we need to make sure we calibrate on the inlet side to the pump or the Venturi or any whatever pump you're using, you wanna make sure that you're, you're on the inlet side or the suction side. And the other conclusion is, is that if you calibrate with water and then you switch to some other fertilizer, you might get a different uh, injection rate than you anticipated. And so you need to make sure you get it close with water and then maybe calibrate it with your fertilizer before you start injection. Hopefully you now know how to properly calibrate a fertigation device. If you're interested in other videos about fertigation, check out the rest of our fertigation series. Thanks for watching.